BiPAP stands for Bilevel Positive Airway Pressure. It's a form of non-invasive ventilation that is commonly used in the field of respiratory care. So if you're looking for a quick overview of BiPAP, keep watching because that is what this video is all about. As I mentioned, BiPAP is a type of non-invasive ventilatory support that gets its name because it provides two levels of pressure, IPAP and EPAP. IPAP stands for Inspiratory Positive Airway Pressure. It's an airway pressure that is above zero during the inspiratory phase of breathing. It works similar to the peak airway pressure in traditional mechanical ventilation. So if you were to increase the IPAP setting, this will increase the delivered tidal volume. EPAP, on the other hand, stands for expiratory positive airway pressure. It's an airway pressure that is above zero during the expiratory phase of breathing. It works similar to the PEEP in traditional mechanical ventilation or the CPAP during spontaneous breathing. Increasing the EPAP setting improves the patient's oxygenation by increasing the functional residual capacity. So essentially, you can make adjustments to the IPAP and EPAP settings depending on the patient's ventilatory and oxygenation status. So just to recap, IPAP is what controls the tidal volume that is delivered. EPAP functions as PEEP and supports the patient's oxygenation. There are two primary indications for BiPAP, acute respiratory failure and an acute exacerbation of COPD. And the best way to determine if BiPAP is indicated is to look at the patient's ABG results. Just to give a very simple example, if a patient has a decreased pH and an increased PaCO2, you could recognize that ventilatory issues are present and BiPAP would be indicated. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema is another common indication for BiPAP, and it's been shown to decrease the need for traditional mechanical ventilation in these patients. Since we talked about when BiPAP would be indicated, now we need to mention when it shouldn't be used or the contraindications for BiPAP. And they are apnea, unmanageable secretions, facial burns or trauma and claustrophobia. Switching gears just a bit, let's talk about making changes to BiPAP settings. Depending on the patient's needs, you can make adjustments to the IPAP and EPAP pressure levels in the settings of the machine. Now a good starting point for BiPAP is 10 over 5. Now of course, this is just a general example. This is not always the case. And what I mean by this is that the initial IPAP setting would be 10 and the initial EPAP setting would be 5. But with that said, the appropriate initial pressure setting for IPAP can range from 8 to 12. The appropriate initial setting for EPAP can range from 4 to 5. Both the IPAP and EPAP settings can be adjusted in increments of 1 to 2 depending on the needs of the patient. For example, if the patient is in respiratory acidosis and needs a larger tidal volume to try to decrease the PaCO2 value, you would want to increase the IPAP setting. Or if you needed to improve the patient's oxygenation, of course you could increase the FIL2, but another way to do this is to increase the EPAP setting, which essentially is the same thing as increasing the level of PEEP. So there you have it. That pretty much wraps up this quick video on BiPAP. If you thought this video was helpful, do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button if you want to support the channel. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the videos that we will be releasing very soon. Let me know down in the comments which topics you want us to cover next. And I just want to say thank you for supporting the Respiratory Therapy Zone community and thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. That's it for this one. Have a blessed day and as always, breathe easy my friend.